What's up everybody? So it's been a little bit since we've last posted, but we're glad to be back and we are gonna be working on a nasty, dirty tile shower and a fiberglass bathtub. And then we're gonna go ahead and steam deep clean this and then fully reglaze it in a nice bright white finish. So here I'm getting ready to go ahead and use my brand new Wagner steamer. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with some water and then turn it on and let it heat up. So you can see the power symbol and then that green symbol tells you when it's ready to be used, but it has to be by itself. If you have both of them on, it's not ready. So this was my first time using it and as you can see, there's a ton of soap scum on this shower on the tile and what the steamer does is basically soften up the soap scum so i can scrape it off i tried just using the steamer by itself then coming back a little bit later and start scraping but it had literally cooled down and almost dried up again so i'm using it simultaneously scraping it off i have to scrape all of the soap scum off and rinse it before i can do any type of acid washing or anything of that sort because otherwise it will not work. That soap scum literally hinders anything from touching, etching, cleaning that original tile. And as you can see, I'm using a single edge blade to scrape it all off. And over time, I will switch out the blade so it's nice and fresh, um, but that's the best way to get the soap scum off of the tile. Comment down below how long you think it was before they last washed this. So normally when I'm reglazing, I don't really worry too much about the shower doors or glass, but this was so bad, I contacted the homeowner and asked them if they wanted me to take care of cleaning the glass. Look at that soap scum just scraping right off. Uh, so I charged a little bit more on that and took care of it. But using again the single edge blade, especially when you're dealing with glass, make sure you've got a fresh blade. You do not want to scratch the glass. So. I went ahead and steamed it, loosened everything up, and look, everything's just kind of flaking right off. There you go, it looks much better. Now I'm gonna work on this other wall. So you guys, it takes a lot of time, but 90% of any reglazing job is prep. So I have not acid etched it yet, I'm still cleaning. And so one thing I like to do throughout the process is take some paper towel and wipe it down 
because the tile is, should be, in a sense, smooth and slippery. So with the paper towel, I'm able to feel any spots that are a little bit rough. That tells me there's soap scum still there. So I wipe it down as I'm drying it a little bit. I'm also feeling areas that still have soap scum. Here, I'm just removing any loose or nasty caulking. You can check out one of my other videos where I specifically go over how to remove and re-caulk around a bathtub. So I'm literally just cleaning, removing anything that once soiled would be considered loose dirt, just kind of cleaning it as much as I can uh, before I start sanding. So now I'm sanding it down with my orbital sander with about 120 grit sandpaper. This will also not only help clean, scuff it up, but it will also remove any soap scum residue that's still hanging around. You guys, that's removing that soap scum is so extremely important. So I'm just gonna take it up all around the tile, put a little pressure on it with the 120 and go ahead and continue cleaning. So now I'm going to start taping and masking around the rails. Some might say, why are you using blue tape? I personally like it. I feel like I get cleaner lines when I remove it. Um, so I go back and forth though between the blue tape and the orange tape. And then the paper, I use the masking tape on top of the, the blue trim tape, which you're going to see. And so it's preference, you guys. One's a little less expensive, one's more expensive. Anytime I'm going on paint, as you can see right there, this unit was freshly painted, so I like to use the blue tape to remove, reduce any chance that I'm gonna pull off um, any paint from, from the painters. So now that the surface has been etched, cleaned, sanded, I do wipe on a bonding agent, which is like liquid super glue. That's what I use for adhesion. 
Keep in mind, when you see me spraying primer, I do not spray primer for adhesion. I spray it to help seal grout, to help neutralize color. Um, also, it's kind of a stain blocker, and it also lets me know if there's gonna be any issues with soap scum, uh, silicone residue, anything that I might may have missed, this primer helps with that. A lot of people might say, oh, you're using the wrong primer, so on and so forth. I'm not using it for the purpose that they're thinking. I don't use it for adhesion. I use it simply uh, for other reasons. So now I'm getting ready to spray. As you can see, I'm using my Wagner Flexio. You guys, this gun is amazing for DIY. I actually am waiting for my HBLP cap spray. I will never go away from that. However, I have a lot of DIYers watching these videos. This is the gun to use. I do not like it for everyday use because it's hard to clean with the lacquer thinner and so forth. But this is perfect for homeowners who are doing it on occasion, maybe doing regular upkeep over you know periods of time if they're doing their different surfaces. This is the gun for you DIYers to use. Professionals use the cap spray, Titan HVLP 75 or 95. All right, so here you go. Final product, you guys turned out real nice. Lots of prep, but totally worth it. Enjoy these before and afters.